Hey guys, it's Madison Estes. Welcome back to my channel. This week I am reading Heartsick and Sweetheart by Chelsea Kane. These books revolve around Detective Archie Sheridan, who was tortured by female serial killer Gretchen Lowell. In Heartsick, we learn that Archie survived approximately 10 days of torture and then Gretchen essentially turned herself in. He visits her every week in prison because she continues to give the locations of the bodies of her victims. And now Archie is leading a new investigation to find out who is snatching and murdering teenagers in Portland, Oregon. Susan is a young, ambitious newspaper reporter, and she's doing a series on Archie throughout the course of the book, both on the new investigation and also on the torture that he endured with Gretchen Lowell and the ramifications of that on his mental and physical health. I'm about halfway through this book, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be at least a four-star book. So I'm really excited to finish reading this book today and let you guys know what I think. So, so far I've made a couple of notes. On page 161, that was whenever I decided that I'm definitely going to do a review on this book. I actually wrote down, I predict that I already know what the major twist is, and if I'm right, I'm going to be super happy. And honestly, if this author doesn't use the twist that I'm thinking of, I might use it myself for a book because I'm pretty excited by the idea. And I also want to say that there's one minor twist around like page 195 where we find out why Archie is allowing Susan to do the report on him and why he's giving her inside info about what happened to him during those 10 days. We find out exactly why he chose Susan and we find out, you know, what his plan was. He kind of had an ulterior motive the whole time. And I, I have to admit, I did not see his ulterior motive and I thought that, that was really cool. It's getting really good now, so I might go ahead and finish this book without interruption and then give you my final thoughts on it tonight. page 221 I had to stop for a second to tell you guys man this book is twisted <laughs> there was like hints of a certain kind of connection between Gretchen and Archie and I did not think that it was gonna get that nasty <laughs> okay so I just finished Heartsick and I have some thoughts so the first thing I want to say is that the twist I thought the author was building up to didn't happen at least not in this book I was a little bit disappointed but, you know, I did think that the ending was really good. I thought that there was a lot of, maybe a little bit too much resolution. There was like 25 pages after the climax of the story, and I was like, wow. There was a couple things to wrap up, but there wasn't that much, and some of it could have been, you know, shortened a little bit. But overall, I thought it was really good. It had a satisfying ending. There wasn't like a big twist moment, though. Next up, I'm going to talk about the characters. Archie is a perfect tortured protagonist. You know, he's obviously very tortured because of what he went through. He has a lot of demons that he's battling. He has, you know, pill addiction. He has trouble sleeping. He has trouble just functioning like a person. He has trouble being around his family. He's obviously suffering from some really severe PTSD. There's some parts of his character that were kind of, uh, to me, um, the fact that he seems to be, like, sexually attracted to Gretchen despite everything that she did to him. I mean, it's not impossible. And they even talk a little bit about Stockholm Syndrome in the book, so I mean, I guess it could be related to that. It just kind of icked me out a little bit, honestly, after, especially after the things that she does to him um, and, you know, the threats that she makes to, like, hurt his family and stuff. Like, to me, that's what bugged me the most. Like, she could do whatever she wanted to him and he could still want her and that would be fine with me. Like, the fact that she, like, threatened his kids and there's, like, even one part of him in, inside of him that, like, doesn't want to just kill her for doing that just bugs me a little bit. But, you know, like, I also felt like that was really human, too, for him to, you know, ha have those urges and even be able to admit to himself that he has them. So I'm reading the next book in the series almost entirely because of how much I like Archie and because I'm interested to see, you know, how his relationship develops between him and his ex-wife. They did get divorced, but they both still have really strong feelings for each other. So I'm really interested to see, like, whether or not they reconcile or how they move forward. In my opinion, it's unfortunate, but Gretchen wasn't developed nearly as well. Despite all of the scenes of torture that we get with her, and there are quite a few sprinkled into this book, 
we don't really have any idea why she does what she does we have no idea what her background is like what her childhood was like we don't know what she did before she became the beauty killer or what led up to it this is a six book series so i'm guessing the author wanted to leave some things for future books and like i said there was a lot going on in this first book there was like i think maybe two main plot lines and then flashbacks with him and gretchen plus there was also a subplot that one of the reporters was working on like she was working on two cases at once so there was a lot going on but i still felt like we should have gotten a little bit more of gretchen's personality in this book the book really relied heavily on oh she's beautiful and she's a female serial killer it's like yes in real life female serial killers are rare but in fiction they're not now susan the reporter the other protagonist in this book was also really well developed i didn't particularly like the description of her that i read on the back of the book calling her quirky to me quirky is like wears polka dotted dresses all the time or has to read while hanging upside down or something you know talking to your dog to help you solve a crime or something you know it's like it's a little bit funny it's a little bit whimsical susan isn't any of those things so i'm really curious as to what made them choose the word quirky other than the fact that she dyed her hair pink how quirky like no dyeing your hair is not a personality trait Anyways, all of that aside, I do think that Susan is a very well-developed character. On the one hand, she's working on one story with the senator who slept with his underage babysitter, and it's very controversial, you know, but he has all these connections, and even her boss is telling her, don't pursue this, he's just too powerful. And then she's also doing the report on Archie and the new killer. I felt like the way that these two storylines came together and the way that it developed Susan's character was really satisfying. There was a bunch of other characters in the story, but I don't feel like any of them were really developed quite enough to talk about. I am really hopeful for Debbie and Archie to get together. Debbie doesn't have a whole lot of personality yet, but she does seem like she's very caring and also very strong. And I really hope that her and Archie get back together and that he doesn't get with someone else because I feel like if Archie reconciles with his wife and overcomes his PTSD, it's like he defeats Gretchen in a way. And if he doesn't, if anything else happens, whether or not he, you know, dies alone or something happens to Debbie or he ends up with someone else, it's like Gretchen won. So I really hope that they reconnect and get back together. Plus, I just, I don't know, even though Debbie barely has had any lines in the story, I just really liked her. And I really liked her character and I want them to get back together. So um, I guess they did develop De Debbie at least a little bit for me to like her that much and be rooting for them that much. Last thing I want to say is that this book is labeled as a thriller. It also has some mystery elements in it. You could possibly guess who did it, but I wouldn't really say that this is a whodunit. I would check out this book if you like psychological thrillers, if you like the premise, but if you're like looking for a good whodunit mystery, this one might not satisfy that urge. So overall, I would say that this is between a 4 and a 4.5. I'm going to go ahead and give it a 4.5. I'm feeling generous at the moment, and honestly, aside from the fact that it wasn't like a huge big twist at the end, I thought that it was really good. I don't have any other major complaints besides that. I am 25 pages into Sweetheart right now, and it's already starting to really pick up. I will let you guys know what I think when I get a little bit further into it. So I just finished reading Sweetheart, and what can I say about this book? To summarize my feelings, I'm pretty disappointed. This book is about Archie investigating a new case. They find a dead body that was dumped in the same location that Gretchen dumped one of her victims. The body ends up being part of a conspiracy and a cover-up, but that doesn't really matter because Gretchen escapes in the middle of the book, and the entire book pretty much just revolves around that, with the main story becoming the B story. So it might have sounded like I just got into some big spoilers there, but actually all of that is on the inside of the dust jacket. I'm kind of confused why they decided to go ahead and spoil one of the biggest surprises in the book because the way that it leads up to it, Gretchen escaping from prison has definitely kind of felt like something that was supposed to be a surprise. So I don't know why they went ahead and spoiled it in the dust jacket except for the fact that they realized that the main mystery wasn't probably interesting enough to get people back in for the sequel. But yeah, that's kind of disappointing because it happens about a third of the way into the book and I already knew it was coming, so it just felt really, really slow. And then the part where Gretchen gets beat up in prison, like I obviously knew that that was a setup for her to escape prison because of what I knew based on what was in the dust jacket. So like even though the characters are surprised, the reader sees it coming a mile away. 
and it was just really kind of disappointing. That and the fact that there's not really any other big surprises in this book. I am going to get into spoilers at this point, both for Heartsick and for Sweetheart, so if you're planning on reading these and you want to go in without any major spoilers, I will leave now, but before you do, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. If you don't, you're going to get kidnapped and trapped inside this Hannibal Lecter wannabe knockoff book. If you don't, Gretchen's going to kidnap you with her magical Gucci. <laughs> if you don't, I, I don't know, just, just subscribe. So what happens is that while Archie is investigating the main story, which, by the way, I was thinking if the body was found in the same location that Gretchen dumped a body, that that was somehow going to be significant. Maybe this was a copycat killer, or maybe it's someone that Gretchen knew on the outside. No. It ends up being a complete coincidence. It has absolutely no relevance to the two storylines have absolutely no connection to each other. It just ends up being a big contrived coincidence. Another thing that I felt was very contrived is that towards the end of this novel, and which, by the way, almost this entire novel is just Archie being one step behind Gretchen trying to track her down. So, I mean, you can pretty much... Honestly, you can skip almost the entire novel. Like, if you're planning on reading the series, I would just go ahead and read book three. The only thing you need to know is that Gretchen escaped prison, Archie tried to kidnap her and did not succeed, and they apparently had an affair before he found out she was the killer. It's like the big twist of the novel, which really doesn't have any relevance on the present day situation. Um, it could maybe explain why Archie's a little bit more attached to her than he otherwise would have been, but it doesn't really make a difference in the long run. So the biggest contrived part of this book is the fact that Archie gets in the car with Gretchen and basically goes along with her plan so that he can get the upper hand on her when she lets her guard down, which is just really ridiculous. Or even after he gets in the car with her, she takes him to the secluded place. She basically tells him he needs to drug himself, though, which was really stupid because, again, he has a gun on her, or he could have a gun on her in seconds, and she appears, appears to not have a gun, so it just... Didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me, but even excusing that, let's just say he wanted to make absolute sure that he was able to take her in alive because he cares so much about all the bodies that haven't been found yet. Okay, whatever. So he gets in the car with her, she takes him to this secluded place, and then, you know, they start having sex because apparently he has some weird dark fixation with her. They have a dark fixation with, with each other. I mean, I get that, but, like, he still takes way too long to handcuff her and then drug himself, and... It's just so stupid. And then there's the fact that there's a wildfire going on and he doesn't like stop to reconsider his plans or anything. He just like goes along with it even though Gretchen could die and that would make his entire plan pointless anyways. One of the other things that felt super contrived to me is that based on one comment that Archie makes about how important this Heather case was to him, his first case, how you never forget it, Susan is able to figure out that oh, Archie must have given us some clue as to how to find him based on Heather. It's all about Heather. And then, like, almost like that, they're able to figure out that Archie must have used Heather's phone number or gotten her phone number and activated a phone in her number. That just felt like so many leaps in logic. Like, that is just not something that you would just instantly know. You couldn't have, like, had them pull over the car and start, like, going through all the files and stuff and then maybe finding the phone number and putting it together or something. I don't know. There just had to be a more natural way to jump to that conclusion if that was something that was so important to the plot. They just had to track him down based on that phone number. There was definitely a more graceful way to do it. Another thing that was super hard to believe was the fact that Susan had a story about a senator. It was like a sex scandal where he had sex with a 14-year-old, and he ends up dying, and the newspaper doesn't want to run the story because, oh, the senator was so loved in this state, we don't want to tarnish his memory. And I'm like, that no newspaper would ever say that. Like, newspapers are in the business of scandals and making money, and if every other newspaper is reporting about what a great guy he is, the fact that you have a story, of, you know, a scandal about something horrible he did, that's going to get big ratings. And I'm sorry, I just don't think there's any news outlet out there that wouldn't take advantage of that. Lastly, Archie would have definitely lost his badge at the end of this story. Like, I'm sorry, even with Henry covering for him and making excuses, like, he willingly got into the car with Gretchen, he admits to having sex with her, and then he handcuffs her and, like, tries to force a confession out of her. He put a lot of people in danger, like, he had the opportunity to apprehend a serial killer and he let her go. Well, he didn't mean to, but she ended up getting away because he didn't, you know, like, just handcuff her and then immediately call the police. Like, he just left her there and, you know, had planned on them finding them much later on, and it was just... 
I'm sorry, there's just absolutely no way he keeps his badge at the end of the story. So even ignoring all of the things in this novel that felt super forced and unrealistic, this novel was just really hard to get through because Archie becomes a very unlikable character in this book. First of all, Archie leaves his seven-year-old daughter's birthday party to go see Gretchen in prison after she gets beat up, because that's more important than his seven-year-old daughter. Gretchen's in prison, she's still my responsibility. Like, that's not true, but even if it was, it could have waited a day. Like, she wasn't dying, she got beat up, but she was fine. And it just really irritated me that he, like, left his child's birthday party to go be with this woman he has this dark fixation with. You know, there's the fact that he thinks that he might be dying, and instead of deciding to spend that time with his wife and children, or spending any time with them, really, uh, he decides to spend that time having sex with Gretchen and hunting her down. Which I can understand wanting to hunt Gretchen down, maybe, like, for the sake of his family to keep them safe, but, like, he didn't have to have sex with her. What I really liked about the first book is that even though he did have this dark fixation with Gretchen, he resisted it. Like, he still took the noble path, and he resisted her. And I felt like that was what I wanted to see more of. That's what made him a compelling character in the first book, is that even though he had all this trauma, and even though he had, you know, this obsession with Gretchen still, um, you know, he resisted and fought that in the first book, and this book he just completely gave in to her. It just really ruined my ability to enjoy this character. I feel like he gave in way too easily, and it had been built up, like he'd been slowly resisting his urges, you know, for years or whatever, or at least for several books, I would have had more sympathy for him. But again, it just felt like he gave into that urge way too quickly, and it just made him more despicable. There's also the fact that Gretchen is basically just a villainous Mary Sue. Like, everything always goes according to her plan. The one time it didn't, whenever Archie finally managed to get the upper hand on her for a second, oh, she's able to get the upper hand again because she's just so clever. Like, that's the, that's the mindset is that she's just so smart she can anticipate anybody's moves. But I think that she just gets really lucky. Like, honestly, most of the things that she's able to get away with, she gets away with because of luck. And because apparently she has, like, a magical coochie that can make men do whatever she wants them to do. She's able to seduce not one, but two guards in order to escape. It's really hard to manipulate one guard to, you know, help you escape prison. The idea of someone being able to manipulate two different guards is just really stupid. A few things I did like in this book, I did really enjoy Susan's character. I didn't like her that much in the first book, uh, mostly because of her affair with Ian and the fact that she keeps sleeping with married men. But there was a lot of character growth in this book, although it does kind of seem like she might be slipping back a little bit at the end of this book. She's not sleeping with uh, married men, but she's still very emotionally unavailable. But I'm guessing it's, you know, like the case of baby steps. I really liked Henry. I liked getting to know more about him, and I liked how he was able to kind of have a bigger role in the story. And I really liked Susan's mother, Bliss. So basically, I liked all the secondary characters. It's just Archie and Gretchen that I can't stand anymore. And I don't know if that's supposed to be intentional or not, but it's really, really hard to want to continue the series, considering the fact that I can't stand two of the main characters. If there was just one more book in this series, I would definitely go ahead and read it, just because I'm a freaking completionist and I can't help myself. But there's like four more books in this series, and I definitely feel like some of those books are probably unnecessary, the way that like half this book was unnecessary. Yeah, I don't know. I can't see myself reading four more books of these characters. I just didn't really like this book at all. I can't recommend it, and I'm only going to give it two out of five stars. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On this channel, I post reviews, writing advice, horror content, and vlogs. And I just edited a horror anthology called Roadkill 6 Texas Horror by Texas Writers. I'll include a link to this in the description box below if you want to check it out. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you later.